Hey, this is Kev with Blender Binge. In this video, we're going to make a hurricane. It's going to be animated, and it's going to be like relatively passable. And if you do a lot more work on it, it's going to look way better. It's a, it's a hack, it's a fake, and it's cool. First thing I'm going to do is set up the camera. So to do that, I'm just going to like hit Alt-G, Alt-R, hit R, then X, and then 90. And all that does is just zeroes everything out here and points it here. Zeroes all this out and points it down the Y axis. OK, that's what I want to do. Next, what I'll do is I'm going to go into camera view. And I'm going to go to camera. I'm going to say background images. I'm going to say add image. I'm going to grab an image that I got off pixabay.com that says I can use it for commercial purposes. There, tropical cyclone from space. So what do we do with this? Well, so the first thing I'll do is I'm going to turn on lock camera to view. And I'm going to use this grid down here that's showing and kind of best guess how to match this to this. It's not going to be exact in here. And a lot of times when you get an image, uh, sometimes it has the metadata with it. And the metadata is great because it kind of tells you at least like, you know, your your focal length and all sorts of camera data that's great. I don't have it in this, so I'm just going to guess as best I can. And you can use another program called FSpy. I, that's just too much for this video. So I'm going to match it up with, by my eye. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go add mesh grid and I'm going to scale this grid up right and uh, maybe I move the camera a little bit more it's, it's kind of a guessing game but that right there probably does pretty well for what I need and I'm not going to worry about all this stuff out here you can delete this if you want but what I am going to do is I'm going to hit tab I'm going to go to edge I'm going to hit subdivide and I'm going to subdivide it a few times like 10 that's probably pretty good now what I'll do is I'm going to go to the EV settings and we see this so we don't really want to see this what we want to see is the texture projected on here so we don't really need the background anymore but that's fine so what i'll do now is i'm going to go to shading and i'm going to add a shader to this so i'm going to make sure i'm in camera view i'm going to hit new so i'm going to get rid of this principled bsdf for now and if you have node wrangler installed which i highly recommend you do i'm just going to hit shift s i'm going to go to shader i'm just going to switch this out to emission and then i'm going to hit Control t and I'm going to hit open, load in that image, and here we go. So now that image is on here. And we could probably use it as is, um, just like this, and get a decent deformation. Or we can camera map this and, you know, do a camera projection. So to do that, and it, it, it might end up looking the same in this, to do a camera projection here, all we need to do is go to UV editing, or just hit UV, and just say uh, project from view. And now it projects this whole thing from the camera view and you see that anything that's not in the camera view is repeating and you can see that in the UV editing here. Um, this is kind of what it looks like if I hit zero and I do this again, watch, project from view, there it is. And it's just projecting it from the view. So that's kind of what it looks like. So what that does is it just projects this onto this geometry from the camera view. And the illusion breaks, obviously, if you move the camera, anything but like in and once you go in a little bit further, you can move it around, but you, you can see where, where the illusion would break. If I back out, the illusion breaks right away, right? But if I go in, it's fine because I'm inside the bounds here. So does that make sense? Great. So what I'll do now is the magic part, right? Here's where it's just really, really, really fun and, and easy. What I'll do is being that I have all this geometry, I can go ahead and I can add in a lattice. And then I'll scale the lattice up to about there and I'll scale it down a little bit right and maybe I'll just scale it up a little more and then for the lattice okay over here under lattice resolution I think I'll do like 8 V I'll do something like 8 and I'll leave this at 2 because I don't I don't really need this much so that's fine now what I'll do is I'm going to use this lattice to drive the deformation of this, okay? And for those of you who are more advanced, you probably just go, oh yeah, I get it. I'll probably stop watching the video now, but just hang on, this gets really cool. So I'm going to move this into the center over the eye. And what I'll do is I'm going to go into, uh, let me see, I'll go into top down mode. And that's probably okay, right? So maybe I'll just put this over here. So what I'll do is I'll hit tab. And I'm going to grab a bunch of these points around the middle, okay, these lattice points. And I can hit zero again, and I'm back in here. And what I'll just do here is I'll just hit Control H for hook, and it says hook to new object. That's what I want. So what that does is, like, you can't 
animate these points just by themselves or I mean honestly if there's a way great but I have not found an easy way to do that but this hook thing works pretty well so you hit control H to hook you say hook to new object and now you get this empty okay you have this empty in the scene and what you can do with this now is if I hit tab to get back to object mode and I go to rotate right watch this you can rotate and it'll rotate those points around the center which is really nice. Okay, that's what we want. So the last thing we have to do here is tell this to use the lattice. So I select my grid object, right? And I just go over to modifiers. I say add modifier. I say lattice. I tell it to use what lattice? Okay, the object. What do I want to use? The thing called lattice, right? And now if I rotate this, well, if I rotate the hook, okay, the empty, I now get that. That's kind of cool. So what do I do with that? Well, I can animate it, right? So I can go over to uh, layout. Well, I'm in layout. <laughs> and I can just keyframe this, right? So I could just go and, and hit insert keyframe. I'll just say rotation, right? You just, I mean, for this, you can just hit I on the keyboard and then just hit location or rotation, right? I don't need location, but I'll just hit I and I'll go to rotation, fine. And then like, you know, I, I'm, I want this thing to render fast. So I'm just going to go to like 96 and I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. Okay. Now we're pretty far away, so it's not going to, it's not going to move too much. Right. I mean, physics wise, like this is probably going to not move that much. It's, it's going to be pretty slow from this distance. Like down in here, it's going to be hell, but like out here, it's going to be pretty cool. Right. So I'm just going to go insert rotation. And now if I look at this and I click off of this, I could turn off this stuff to show overlays and I hit this. Ooh, I get some movement, but you know, we want this to look a little bit crazier. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just add to this like that. Okay. Rotation, click off of it. And let's see what it looks like now. Hit play. Ah, now we have some motion. All right. That's probably like way too fast. Okay. This would be like time lapse for Hurricane. I don't know. I've never been in space. Maybe it's not. I, I, I don't know. I could probably look at videos and tell you, but that's fine. So just for purposes of this video, great. So now I can do is I can I can animate the camera. So I kind of like using this control for animating the camera. So I'll go over here to item and I can do like a rotation on the camera. And as long as I push in, remember I said pushing in, you get a little bit. And that's why you like using a high res or high depth image like this thing's like almost 4K should be decent for this. I'd recommend even going higher if you can get one or matte paint your own, but that's cool. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to say rotation, insert keyframes, right click, insert keyframes on all of this at one. Uh, let me find something like a little more interesting on the rotation channels here. I'll just go in a little bit. Okay. Like that's kind of cool right there. So I'll just replace keyframes, right click, replace keyframes, go to 90, kind of keep it in frame. Do somewhat of a movement here. You know, it doesn't have to be much just a little bit, just to make it interesting. And here we go. So now like that. All right. So there we go. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to, I'm just going to back off that a little bit. Cause that seriously, man, like that's way, that's like way too crazy. So I'll just go like to like 12, whatever, replace keyframe, check it out now. And this is like an iterative process. All right. So there we go. It's moving. It's doing cool things. Now here's where we can make it interesting. This image is an image, so it's going to look good kind of no matter what. But if you want, you could always go and sculpt, sculpt some of this out and just do like really light shadowing and, and you can get even more resolution. So what you can do is you can go over to sculpting and you can add some resolution or what you can do is use a bump. So shading here, being that we're so far away, you could probably get away with a bump, right? So I can change emission here. This is where it gets fun, right? So so I can change emission back to principled and I can go ahead and add in uh, this image here as a bump. So I can just take this and yeah, I'm not going to be like data purist here. So I can go color. Let me, let me do this. I'm just going to go color to normal and don't worry. We're going to add some more stuff in here. So I'll just go vector bump, throw a bump in here. And uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and convert this to black and white data. So I'm going to go convert RGB to black and white. Okay, so now I have a value going and I don't want this in normal. I want this in height. Now we start getting some height. 
not exactly what we want right now, but watch this. So we can go add and I'll do a light and I'll say sunlight. Okay. And just so you can see this, I'm going to move this down a little bit here and I'm going to pull this up on the Z and then I can find the rotation. So the background I'm going to take and kill that off. And now the sun rotation, I can throw in like on the Y, on the Z, and kind of find where that sun is coming from. It looks like it's coming from this angle, projecting this way. So here we go. And now I can select this, go back to my material here, and see the roughness. That's crazy. We want complete roughness. And then my sunlight here, I can go to increase my power a little bit and turn on EV. And now you start seeing this is really crazy, right? So let's go ahead and back off that because we totally don't need it to be that crazy, right? So we back off, we just give it a little bit of bump just so it reacts with light just a little bit from this distance. Okay, and you hit play. And there, now it's a little bit more interesting and looking a little bit better. And then obviously you can go in and you can add more lattices in here. You could do another lattice and you can speed this up inside here and then you can have a fall off back here. Um, and there's quite a bit of stuff that you can do inside this lattice cage that you can make this much better. So uh, under the modifier here, you have the fall off type, you have a radius. Okay. If you play with the radius, you get a better fall off, um, uniform fall off, smooth, spherical, but at this depth here and from this distance, it kind of fakes it decently. And lastly, you might want to shadow this area a little bit, but I'm not quite certain that would make a, a difference. So, all right, so here's one that I rendered out looking pretty decent. I, uh, I comped it. So I rendered it out as EXR files and uh, it's kind of similar to this video up here. And that kind of shows you how to go about doing that whole thing. But you know, what? the cool thing about this is you can do it without volumetrics and it saves a ton of render time. And if the camera's moving and everything and your shot is pretty short, not a bad way to do something like this. So hopefully you got something out of the video. If you did hit like, subscribe, share it, whatever. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.